word. He was preaching the word of the Lord. And too many people today are preaching this message of peace, peace, as our morality in this country goes down the toilet. I, have, I cannot believe the, the acceleration just within the past couple decades of, of the decline of our morality in this country and just to think that there's still churches out there saying everything's just fine and God loves it and hey, we need to be more accepting and more tolerant. Let's let the homos and let's let all of this wickedness and filthiness abound and when you have the adultery running rampant, oh, it's just fine. Everything's okay. No, it's not okay. God hasn't changed. A sin is still a sin. God's laws are still what they are. He made them from the beginning and and he still gets angry at sin every day. And we can't just sit here and say that these things are fine because they're not. Let's uh, flip over to 2 Timothy chapter 4. Because we live in a time where this type of an attitude abounds. This, the, the sin is abounding for sure. But this, this attitude of these preachers who are preaching lies and prophesying and saying everything's just fine when it's not. We're going to see in 2 Timothy 4, verse number 2, the Bible reads, Preach the word. This is instruction from the Apostle Paul to Timothy. He's saying, Preach the word. Be instant, in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. So, so the, the right way for Timothy to preach. He's saying you need to preach the word first and foremost, God's word, the Bible. You have to preach the word. He's saying be instant, in season, out of season, whether it's popular or not. Whether the things found in God's word are popular, mm. preach it. If it's unpopular, preach it anyways, in season and out of season. And then he says reprove. What's reproving? It's telling someone that they're wrong. What's rebuking? Telling someone that they're wrong. And exhorting. You're giving someone, you know, an exhortation to, to do something that's actually not quite as negative as the reproving and rebuking. But he says, with all long suffering and doctrine. And again, the doctrine is important. It's coming from God's word. It's coming from the truth. Verse number three. Why does he have to preach this way? Why? For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. As our society becomes more wicked, you're going to find a lot more of these false prophets arising because they're in demand. Because as the wickedness gets worse, these people are going to come, the time's going to come when people are not going to endure sound doctrine. They don't want to hear it. People like so, when, when, when you get into a lot of sin, you don't like to be told you're wrong. You don't want to, what you want is someone to tell you that everything you're doing is just fine. You want someone to tell you, even though you know you're in sin, you want someone to tell you, you know what? No, God's really not mad with you. Your sin's fine. You're just okay. Keep doing what you're doing. They want someone to confirm that with them. So they have these itching ears. They're saying, okay, I need you, you. Come over here. We're going to put you behind the pole. We want you just to, to tickle my ears a little bit. I want you to, I got an itch over here. Can you scratch that for me? Oh yeah, that feels good. Thanks. And they go out and, and nothing ever changes in their life. They keep doing what they're doing, keep getting worse and worse. And as this happens in our society, it's just kind of this cyclical effect. It's a snowball effect where people get more wicked, more false prophets are here because they've got more people to, to spread their lies to and just teach his falsehood to. And as a result, no one's going to change. Things, people aren't going to be hearing the truth. And it's just going to be getting worse and worse. And that's why we need preachers to be able to stand up and say, you know what? No, that's a lie. We're going to preach God's word. We're going to do it the way that the Apostle Paul told Timothy to do it. I'm going to preach God's word. Not just whatever I think out of my own heart. I'm going to preach what the Bible says. 